One day I saw an email and it talked about horses and horse slaughter. And I didn't understand that because I knew I had signed the petition to make horse slaughter illegal in this country and it was passed. And so when I dug deeper, I realized that horses were still going to slaughter. They were being transported illegally to Canada and Mexico and that there was a bigger piece to the picture. And so I started my journey. I created a not-for-profit organization and realized that this was my path. This is who I am. We met Manda. We was discussing horses. She mentioned uh, Canna. So I said, what's Canna? She said, uh, it's an organization trying to save horses. So I thought, would be interesting if you came to my country and seen how the horses live? and maybe we can connect. Little did I know, she came. I'm Samantha Skinnendor. I'm a Ho-Chunk Oneida here from Madison, Wisconsin, and I practice law. I work for Indian Country in all sectors. Anything that is aligned with making this world a better place, improving the planet, applying indigenous cultural resources, knowledge, and practices, I'm usually game to take on those challenges. Rewilding using horses as a mega herbivore is basically allowing nature to rebuild itself in the way nature knows how. Horses are architects of the land. The way they eat, the way they move, helps to allow smaller animals to come in, helps to build biodiversity, helps to build nutrients into the soil. It's just the pyramid of nature. Then we can bring in predation, and all of those things build biodiversity. What we have to show the federal government is that when they call the horse an invasive species, biologically, they are wrong. We have to recognize that the horse is a survivor. It's a survivor like the buffalo is. We should honor that. We should regard that as an advantage rather than a disadvantage. Now we're in a position with an administration that appears to be friendlier than ever, who is welcoming than ever of Indigenous people's knowledge and incorporating that into the federal fabric of this land. So the timing is crucial. Global impacts are affecting all species, including humans. We need to think about ways that we coexist and how we support those ecosystems for them to do what they do. If we don't have an ecosystem, there's no more humans. There's a lot of outrage around the Roundup practices, which show things like horses being chased by helicopters, aggressively falling flat on their faces. And these are supposed to be wild horses, so they're managed in a way where they're supposed to progressively be detached from human civilizations. What's always important to me is showing the other side. We need to answer both questions, how not to do things and how to do things and what that will bring us. My goal here at Kenna is to bring the voice, the knowledge of traditional indigenous cultures forward because without that knowledge, I believe all the modern day sciences and all of that, that's needed and that's great. But without traditional ecological knowledge from tribal nations, we will not succeed. So partnering with tribal partners and understanding and bringing the voice of elders and historical knowledge and stories forward in reference to the alliance and partnerships of horses and their impact for tribal people is what we need to go forward. A lot of indigenous people from a variety of tribes have signed in, signed up, and have engaged Canna to get this work done. They have these indigenous partners. They understand and respect that connection between non-indigenous allies to the indigenous leaders and allies that are also out there to the foundation. So it, it's a long-standing relationship. We're going to start with an experiment, which is one or more large plots where we can try out some of our rewilding ideas, trying to restore nature so that we can show to people that this is a viable way of doing things. Maybe these tribes have agricultural land bases or grassland prairie or vast areas of land where it is proper to introduce a herd of wild horses and really see how much medicine those horses bring to that area. Out of these 
rewilding initiatives, educational projects and components that we can put together, that we can get into schools, that we can teach and educate. That's what I want to see. We need to see tens of thousands of acres of land all laced with horses. Beautiful, beautiful, amazing wild horses that are doing their job, building out amazing biodiversity and land, helping with climate change. That's the future of Kenna.